Hey guys, this is Jesse, and welcome to my part four of how to battle damage and paint your gunpla. And in this uh, part, we're going to be dry brushing, and we're going to get results similar to this. So this is the torso of my RGM, and it had energy blasts and and uh, a scar there, and just overall. Uh, scuffs and stuff and this is it dry brush and finished up so we're going to do that today on the shield and um, what you'll be needing is uh, two or three brushes um, these are relatively small I have a smaller one for detailing and a larger one for um, overall just dry brushing uh, you don't want it too big or else you're going to leave like huge streaks down it so you'll want one that's relatively short uh, you can buy a longer one and just cut the bristles um, and it should be fine but you want something similar to this so and then you might want a detail one which is just smaller um, these usually get sold in sets so um, you could probably get a small one and sort of a medium one and a long one all in one all for one price and then you'll obviously need some paint now there's two kinds of paints. There's water-based paints and oil-based paints. Uh, water-based acrylic paints and uh, for models at least, um, enamel paints are the oil-based ones. I use enamel paint personally because I just kind of like, um, I, I don't know, I, I like the, the sort of consistency of it and um, it doesn't get rubbed off with your, with sort of the moisture in the air, um, but if you touch it enough with your hands the oil on your skin can actually rub off the paint but um what I usually do is um, paint with enamel then um, do a top coat with acrylic so it's kind of like a double protection thing so but anyways we're not at that part yet we're at the dry brushing part um, now the brand of paint I use are testers if you've ever painted models in your life um, as a kid or something these are probably the paints you use they've been around forever um, I'm not saying that Testers is the best brand out there or anything. I've used a whole bunch of paints. I've used Vallejo, Citadels, Testers, uh, Mr. Hobby, Mr. Color. Um, you know, it's all up to you. It's your, it's your preference. But I, I like Testers, so um, these are the paints I use. So the two kinds of colors you'll need are a silver and a black. Um, if you want to know the exact uh, silver, this is Testers Enamel. Uh, flat aluminum and this is um flat black so if you want to get these exact um, bottles that's what you'll be looking for I have a flat gunmetal here that I just like 10 minutes ago was dry brushing uh, the torso and found a, found that this added a better color uh, diversity in the energy blast so I'll be using that but you don't need to so I'm going to do this tutorial without uh, or without the gunmetal and I'll show you how that looks. So, um, Then you're going to need a thinner. Uh, acrylic base paints you can thin with water so you'll just you know fill up a cup from your sink um, but for enamel oil base paints you're going to need some sort of thinner. Um, you can get paint thinner. Um, that thing stinks up the room like no one's business so what I suggest is buying some of this stuff. This is mineral spirits. Um, you'll find in this sort of white bottle with a green label um what i like about this stuff is it's odorless for one and um it takes a little longer to thin the paint but it honestly it it um it makes up for it for being odorless and um you don't need a lot of it at all so uh, this is sort of a milky consistency and color um i have some in my cup here so you can kind of see it down there it kind of looks like milk um, so if you're looking for an equivalent to mineral spirits there, that's the kind you'll be looking for. So, um, basically to get started, oh, you also need a paper towel. So, to get started, get your piece or whatever you're going to paint. Um, fill up your, a cup or something with your thinner. And then, basically it's going to be a tutorial on dry brushing. So, what we're basically going to do is we're going to get our brush uh, wet and then we're going to uh, get as much paint off as we can until like what you've got on the paper is kind of this consistency right here kind of like a chalk so you're basically just 
brushing on dry paint, which is why it's called dry brushing. So we're going to take uh, silver first and we're basically just going to go over it and catch the edges of um, our piece. So that's why I liked sandpapering all my uh, pieces before I, um, or while I build so that when I come to dry brushing the paint will kind of seep in between the scratches and stuff and it'll make it look uh, as good as the torso. So this is my silver here. Sorry if it's a bit off focus because I'm going to do this kind of close up here. All right. So I'm going to get my brush wet. Uh, kind of save paint by getting the excess in there. And then, yeah. So you can see it's kind of at a chalky consistency. And basically, we're just going to. like that in strokes. Now the nice thing about enamel that I like over acrylic is it's far easier to erase so to speak. Um, basically all you gotta do is get your brush um, wet with whatever thinner. Not, not too wet so like uh, just moist with your thinner and just kind of erase it off like you would with a pencil eraser or something and you can get paint off really easily. Um, acrylic I find it a little harder to do uh, simply because I don't know I guess the water doesn't want to cooperate or something. Well that's kind of what you'll be getting. Um, so work under a light so you can kind of see the the fruits of your labor. Um, and if you feel like you're low on paint all you gotta do is repaint up just make sure your brush isn't too wet. And just go over all the edges across the surfaces. Um, the scars and stuff that you made earlier should catch the paint really, or you should catch your brush really easily and um, uh, really rip off the paint from the from the bristles and that's what you want so you don't want to dip your brush all the way into the into the paint canister or whatever because you're not going to be using that much paint either so just kind of dip it and let it let the bristles kind of soak up the paint okay um silver always looks really good on the gray parts of Gumpla. Um, usually when you do a metallic dry brush on a metallic surface it'll come out far easier or a metallic on a uh, darker um, surface. So grays really pop, uh, this metallic orange really pops. Um, you won't see it as much on this beige because it's lighter but it will dirty it up nicely. Yeah, kind of like that. So, uh, the black will show up better on here because we're also going to dry brush this black. I'm going to I'm gonna get my brush a little more wet for this because I want the edges of my energy blast to be a little more silver. So, this is more. You can always experiment with how wet you want your brush to be. It doesn't have to be completely at a chalky consistency, but I would suggest starting out with that. Um, and then going in and go with a wetter brush and catching the, the details that you want to catch. Sorry, I was just getting the side of the shield. Make sure you get all your sides. Every angle that you think will be seen. Anyways, I took out a giant chunk there, so I'm going to put quite a bit of silver on that. So do that real quick. Here I'm just kind of dabbing the brush just to get some paint off but it's going to be kind of heavy and it's a little too heavy so what I can do dry up my brush and just kind of brush that in. So I'm going to erase 
or clean up some of this. So right now I'm dipping my brush in the thinner. So here it is, kind of wet. I'm just gonna get moist instead of wet, and just sort of, yeah. I have no idea why my camera just won't focus. There, there we go. I'm just kind of clean some of this up because I feel like there's a little too much silver on the surface. You kind of can go like that, but make sure I do uh, strokes in the end because you want all the damage and all the scuffing to be in one direction. You don't want to go crazy in all directions. You want all the scarring to sort of be in one general di general direction. Um, it's just more. It'll, it'll look better. Your your scratches and the directions of your scratches will will determine which way um, the paint will go. So I can get camera to focus. There we go. Um, I'm gonna need a little more paint for this one part because even though I cleaned up the bottom, cleaned it up a little too much. And there we go. Okay, so I'm going to take my brush here, I'm just going to put it in my thinner, and now I'm going to do details. So, the way I do details is I take my smaller brush, I get it uh, pretty wet, um, almost, let's see if I can get a focus this close, if I can do it pretty close. Okay, so I, I take silver. Got a lot of silver on it. Okay. And I just dab it maybe once or twice. And then I just paint in the details of um, my bullet holes. I just go in with silver for each bullet hole. Just like that. I'm not going to do every one of them on camera. I'm going to do some off camera. But. I just do that, and then also for my energy blast, I fill this all in with silver, all of this inside. So my brushes. I'm working with a fairly wet brush. Um, you can see, you can't really see here because it's too dark, but there's quite a lot of paint on my brush because I want to get that completely colored in. I don't want any of the original Gunpla colors in there at all. So. Kind of see it darkening up in there. I'll do the other energy blast since it's probably easier to see on camera. So. And get cover up as much silver as I can in there. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and do that for all bullet holes in the two energy blasts. Alright, so I've let the silver dry a bit, and this is what I got. See the insides all silver, all the bullet holes are silver. I forgot to mention you'll want to paint the, any sort of scars you have as well. Uh, silver, so I've kind of gotten in there with the silver. Um, cleaned up a bit with uh, the thinner and yeah so that's what I got and now we're gonna move on to the next part and that's dry brushing with black and the reason why we do this is because this looks really good but it looks a little too uh, unrealistic um, usually when metal gets blasted or something the so you know the silver part shows but then the soot or or dirt or whatever left by a bullet or or by a wind or something will start to um, beat up on this stuff. So basically we're just going to use black to darken this a bit, um, which will uh, it, it'll just look more realistic if we look at, um, let's see, this waist skirt armor. You kind of tell that it's still a little silvery, but the black dry brush I did over it, it kind of makes it looks like it, it had kind of oil and stuff running down it and um that just looks better than than just silver um 
At least I think it does. Uh, we're also going to, here's an arm piece I did. Um, you can see the silver has been darkened up significantly and it looks really dirty and, and um, scuffed up and beat up. Uh, we're also going to take black and uh, really highlight these scars and these bullet wounds. Um, the black here is quite watery, so to speak. So it kind of, I kind of use it kind of uh, really wet and just let it seep into edges and cracks and stuff. But we're going to start off with a dry brush just overall. And you don't have to really do any details or anything. Just kind of take black and just dry brush it all around. Um, I mean, I'll go ahead and do that, but it's the same technique as um, the silver. So there's that. I'm just going to over here on the side do what I did earlier and get that black to a chalk consistency. And then simply dry brush it over. And it'll be kind of hard to tell at first when you're doing this whether or not it's making a difference, but I promise you um, it, it's going to darken it up. Notice it at first like I said, but um, after you kind of step back and look at it, you'll notice that the silver kind of shines through a black film of sort, and it looks really good. So I'm almost, I'm pretty much almost done. I mean, I just took just a bit of black and just dry brushed it over. All I did was darken up the silver. And you can see that looks a little, a little more realistic in terms of the actual color you would get from a from metal that was black under or um, silver underneath. So now I'm going to take my detail brush, which I'm getting out of my um, thinner. Just dry that off real quick. Okay, and. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to take my detail brush. I'm going to get it about as wet as I did for the aluminum or for the silver like detailing. Now I'm just going to come in here and do the same thing. I'm just going to detail the bullets up and the scars, especially. I'm going to go, I always go kind of heavy on the scars, but that's completely up to you. Um, this, this part isn't, nece isn't necessarily <laughs> necessary, but I feel like it always makes scars and stuff stand out because like I said if a bullet were to hit a hit metal or whatever it would leave behind soot and dust and stuff you can kind of see how I kind of uh, kind of leaked out a bit because it's a little watery but you can kind of dry off your brush off to the side and this kind of paint down a bit and just kind of spread it out so it doesn't look like it it's kind of a pool of paint um but yeah so i would do that for every scar and stuff but the f but the thing i really want to touch on is um the energy blast so i take i take my brush like super wet almost let me dab it twice and just come in here and just really get a lot of black in the energy blast because that's like it like instantly melted the the metal in the mobile suit so like I said I get I get my brush pretty dang wet Sorry, I'm trying to focus here Come in here and I just highlight up. So if you can see, the one on the left is really, really dark and it looks burned and destroyed, and the one on the right is still silver. So for the bullet holes, this isn't necessary, but I feel like it really is necessary for the energy blast. And you'll want to get in there pretty wet because it'll it'll just have more paint on there and it'll end up being a little more reflective. And I don't know, it just looks better to me. Um, what I was talking about earlier with the gunmetal is 
um, I was messing around, get, trying to get some color diversity. And the gunmetal is kind of this um, blackish, olivish, greenish. It's kind of strange. And um, I went over with that in the energy blast as well. And I liked it. So I'll probably do it on this kit. You're going to dry brush um, silver. And then you're going to fill in all the details with silver. Let that dry. Then dry brush black. And then fill in all the details with black. And you'll also want to get maybe parts like this. Or like down here where you got parts off with some heavy black as well. Um, it's all up to you, but I would say the energy blasts are kind of necessary that you do black and um, I think uh, highlighting scars highlighting scars and um, bullet holes really benefits from doing the black alright, well that's the end of this part, the next part we're going to be doing like sand and mud and um, more details with um, something called Tamiya uh, weathering tools So. That's it for this tutorial. Thanks for watching, and I hope you're enjoying the series.